What's up, folks? Yeah. Welcome to O'Leary's Garden, where life is a garden. Quick disclaimer, this video will include alcohol and cigarettes. Okay, that's long enough for you to go away if you don't want to see any of that. So, I just wanted to talk to you real quick about the last video and what I told you about the IBC totes holding mulch colorant. So I did a little bit of research because I felt that I owed that to you about what was in the dye that was used in the particular IBC tote that was used in that last video. I did not go through every type of dye, every manufacturer, everything like that. Okay, I went through that particular one and I don't even remember the name. At the end of the video, I'll walk over there and I'll show you just so, just so you have that. Um, but the two ingredients in the mulch dye used in that container were carbon black and iron oxide. Are you scared? I'm not really scared. Carbon and iron. Terrifying. So the information I have for you here is from chemicalbook.com. I will put links down in the description for you so you can read it for yourself. Um, so the first one, carbon black. The chemical number was 13338684. And that website listed that it was edible in a pastry at up to 1%. 1% of a pastry, how big? I don't know. Is it a pastry this big? Is it a donut? I got no idea. But it's edible up to 1%. It's also used in food coloring for rice, flour products, candy, biscuits, and pastries up to 5 grams. It is also insoluble in water, which doesn't scare me very much to have that stuff in this tank filled with water. It said that it is virtually pure elemental carbon. Not scary. Iron oxide. 1309-37 one not while you not not who not uh, not water soluble and used in nutrient and dietary supplements as a source of iron again i'm going to use them i'm not going to for legal reasons i'm not going to recommend that you use them but i'm going to be using it I'm going to be using it for to water my chickens, especially since they're not water soluble. Neither one of those ingredients are water soluble. So it shouldn't be getting into the water. Now I've got an agronomist who lives next door to me. I could give him a, it's not really soil, but he might be able to work something out. Maybe I could test it, see if it's getting in there. I have no idea, but I'm going to be using it. I will be using it and I will not be worried about it. Now here we'll go back and I will show you the manufacturer. We'll go this way. <laughs> All right. So here is the label. I'm gonna turn you around quick. All right. Ka Boom. There is the label. For all of you don't want to know, Mulch Magic Dark Walnut. I don't know how well you can see. I can't tell. Okay. So right there, the ingredients. Carbon black. Is it backwards? It might be black back, but carbon blackwards on your. Uh, your screen. I don't know. You can go back and pause that and mirror it or whatever. Whatever you gotta do to get your answers. Um, and while you're here, I guess we'll go ahead and check them on the other ones real quick. Okay, so this one is also magic mulch magic dark walnut. 
carbon black iron oxide. This one is ultra triple black. A Marimulch. You don't see the ingredients on this one. Um, if I can't find ingredients on it, I might use it for something else. And this one. Heartland Enriched Colorants. I don't see an ingredients list on this one either. Alright, so non-hazardous metal oxide, non-hazardous pigment mixture, non-hazardous latex emulsion, possible carbon black. Okay. So those aren't as straightforward. They make me a little more nervous. So those two I probably will not be using for drinking water. Um, and I would recommend that you don't either. But you're a grown up and you can make your own decisions. Right? I think. I don't know. Alright guys. Well. That's that. Just felt I owed that to you. Okay. Bye.